Hi, welcome to Cookfulness session number six. It's the last one of this series. I'm saying this series as if there's going to be another one. I hope there will. Um, fingers crossed we can do another one. It would be great. I've really, really enjoyed it. I had some fantastic questions and um, some things I didn't know I've learned. It's brilliant. It's been fantastic. I've met some wonderful people. So uh, thank you so much for watching. So what are we going to do for the, for the last one? So I thought I'd go a little bit different which you know me i like to do things a little bit differently so today i'm going to do a whole roasted cauliflower you know i like my roasted cauliflower this one i'm going to do a whole roasted one and it's actually delicious as a, a main course or as a, a side but it's just fantastic and it's really easy to make which is great fun and it just looks fab so a whole roasted cauliflower i'm going to do with it a, it's a sort of hummus, but it's not a hummus. So it's got tahini in it, but it hasn't got any chickpeas. It's a pea hummus. So that will be fun. It's really tasty, really fresh, really lovely, and goes with so many, many, many things. And then lastly, I'm going to do a watermelon pizza. Promise you, it's lovely. It really is, I promise. So this is the last one. I'm actually a mixture of nervous excited and a bit disappointed that it's coming to an end but let's hope there's more so just to get myself in the mood calmed because i'm a bit ooh, i'm going to just do a bit of breathing just calm myself down no matter how much i've done these and i really enjoy them the bit where you turn the camera on is when it goes ooh. so yeah it's, this is going to be a, a great session. Now, I actually haven't got my cookfulness uh, apron on today because I've got my Isle of Man top. I'm from the Isle of Man originally, very proud Manxman. Um, so I thought I'd put my TT on, on, just for the last one. Music, gotta love the music, gotta have your playlists going, no matter what it is, what you're playing it on, could be a tape, cassette, could be vinyl, could be anything, it doesn't matter. Could be you singing, humming, whatever. Um, music I've been listening to recently, I've got into some old stuff I've really enjoyed, I've got some new things I'm really enjoying, um, and I've just mixed everything up, um, loads of stuff. I've got found some great, um, some great rock music, some great soul music, some blues, some jazz. Again, my daughter was playing some more of a um, cinema movie playlist things, and there was some just amazing blues took me back to the old Blues Brothers film, one of the originals, and when I was in my teens and twenties, I was a drummer in, a, in bands. I played originally in a blues band, which was great fun. We, we, it was just a good laugh. Uh, and then I moved into another band and played with some extraordinarily really talented people. So most of them are still professional musicians, apart from me. <laughs> um, but I was the drummer. Um, loved it. We had such a laugh playing, great fun, which is probably why I love music so much because you know it was in me. I just love it, and I'm always tapping away or using one of my daughter's heads or legs as a thing drum kit to tap on. Um, so yeah, always got music in me. Miss it. Can't play the drums anymore, unfortunately. But you know, you can still tap away and still get the music. And, and one day I will play again. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it, but. We'll see, we'll see. Right, let's get going with this beautiful whole roast cauliflower. What are you gonna need? Well, a whole cauliflower for a start. A tray that's got a bit of something to hold it up so the cauliflower can sit nicely in it. I've just got it lined with some paper because it, with some foil, excuse me, it just helps with washing up because you haven't got to do as much, which is always helpful. A little bowl to mix your marinade in. Some olive oil. I'll give you the measurements as we go. Some smoked paprika and some garlic. Um, my new favourite knife from the wonderful Active Hands. Thank you very much. Um, pastry brush. Doesn't don't have to have one of these. I'll show you why when we get there. Tablespoon and a teaspoon and a little bowl for mixing everything up and some salt and pepper. So how to prepare this beautiful cauliflower now? As you can see, I've taken the leaves off uh, and I'm just going to use the knife to just gently cut away the bit of the root so that it'll sit nice and straight. 
Right, what you want to try and avoid doing is cutting any of the florets off. So there you can see it's just flat, got a little starfish on the bottom, and that now sits beautifully. Ta da, like that. So let's get rid of those bits. That's the first part. And now we're going to make our sort of, it's, it's a marinade and a, and a roasting liquor, whatever you want to call it. It's got everything in it, so it's just brilliant. So let's start. Um, start with the paprika, smoked paprika. Again, you, you've seen I've used this a few times before, but it is great stuff. Don't get it too close up your nose because you'll blow your head off. Ooh. So, tablespoon, two of these. Doesn't want to come out, which is always good. These other ones have a little dig. Sometimes they get a bit stuck on the bottom. So, two tablespoons of smoked paprika. Again, you, it, it's a big cauliflower, so you know it's not, you think it's a lot. I need to get some more smoked paprika, I've just about run out. That was good, just got enough. There we go, two tablespoons of smoked paprika, some garlic. Now, these jars, you know I love these jars, I love jars of stuff, but someone's always, you've also asked me about opening jars, and uh, one of the other things that I got sent by Active Hands was this, it's like a little rubber gripper. You just stick it on top of the jar and it just opens everything so easy, it's brilliant. And you can also put, use it to put it back on again. It's very good, really cheap, and it's just easy to store and wash and whatever. Use this for all jars, it's very good, really like it. So, into the smoked paprika, three teaspoons of garlic. One, two, three. Okay, three teaspoons of garlic. Some olive oil. I'm just gonna do two tablespoons of olive oil. You can use rapeseed oil. Uh, and don't use any sort of flavoured, strongly flavoured oils like sesame, etc. It'd just be too strong. Just a nice neutral olive oil is nice. And then salt and pepper. Pepper. A bad quarter of a teaspoon, you know, not too much. Same with salt. And then just give that a good mix up to get all the smoked paprika all mixed up and all the dryness is gone and it turns into this lovely wet gook. Now this is, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a beautiful rich dark colour. Now what I'm going to do is you get your cauliflower. Now there's no real subtle way of doing this, you're just going to get all of that onto all of this. So you can use the brush. I'm going to, so you stick it on. The best way is to really just use your hands and get in there and give it a all right old rummage. But I really don't fancy having my hands smelling of paprika garlic for the rest of the weekend. So I'm going to use the brush. Now all you do is just give it a good pummel around, get it into all the little nooks and crannies. And it's quite a, an easy push because the garlic just helps it stay. And you just literally paint it on. This is great fun to do with, if you've got children, get them painting it on. Because it, it also gets them the smell, it gets them to, to like vegetables, because I'm very lucky that my girls are sort of at that age where they're starting to like certain things that they never did. So cauliflower, thankfully, is up on their list because I use it a lot. Um, my youngest is now changing her mind quite a bit on what she liked yesterday. She doesn't like any more today, but that's just part of the fun. Any bits that drop off to the bottom, just pick them up, give them a, a wild john. And that, obviously I've missed little bits around the back, but you just keep going until you've got it all covered. There, you have the most beautiful and the most incredible smelling cauliflower. Now, what to do with this? So, 
First things first, get another sheet of foil, uh, foil. just give it a good cover down because what you don't want to do is for it to, to burn. So this now goes into a, a hot oven 200 degrees for one hour. Just leave it, let it go, make sure you've got everything covered up. After an hour, take off the foil and do another 20, 25 minutes just to get the night nice and sort of caramelized on top. So an hour and a half all in, an hour with the lid on, the foil lid on, and then 25 minutes with it off. And I shall show you what that looks like a bit later on. Hi, so my cauliflower is now roasting away in the oven and I'm gonna make the, whole, the pea hummus. So not surprisingly, in a pea hummus are some peas. So these are just frozen peas um, that I have blanched in, in boiling water, just, just literally for about two minutes in boiling water and then out. And they're lovely, bright green and fresh. 200 grams of, of peas there. Some tahini paste. So tahini um, is in pretty much all hummuses. Um, it's got that sort of nutty flavor, well it's sesame, it's roasted sesame seed paste, that's why. Um, it's, it's really lovely. If you've got trouble with sesame, obviously, don't use this. Um, some more garlic, lemon juice, a little bit of water, and cannellini beans. So no chickpeas in this one, as I said, this is a cannellini bean one. It's quite fun to say cannellini bean one. Um, this all goes in, basically in one, into, my blender. Now, if you watched the last one, I hope you did, you'll know about my new favorite toy, my little mini blender. Um, so this time in here, I've got the, just the blade, the whizzy blade. And then again, as you can see, I'm at my dining table again, and I can still use all this thing. I've got it plugged in with an extension. My wife helped me set it all up for me. Um, and I can just get on while I'm sat down, music's going. Dogs asleep, happy days, you know? Sun was shining, it's gone in a bit now, but this is what it should be all about. You should be enjoying it, not worrying about cooking. It should be all about the fun of it, the joy of what you're gonna create from these amazing ingredients. And there's not that many of them, so let's do it. So in go the 200 grams of peas, because it is a pea. On top of that, It's a basically not a lot, but just a tablespoon and a half of cannellini beans. Oh God, I can't use it, I have to use this one. Garlic, where would you be without garlic? A teaspoon of garlic, and that goes. Tahini, oh, I'm getting that off either. Oh good, very clever. Now, tahini paste, basically a whole tablespoon of it. It's just a little bit under there, so I'll just give her a little bit more. It's sort of, it's a strange tasting thing on its own. It's sort of sour, quite a sour flavor to it. And then for the lemon, just gonna Juice it, so I'm just going to cut it in half with my new favourite knife. And then just a squeeze of half a lemon, that's all you need. If, like me, you have a pip just dropping, just grab him out. And out he comes. Then, last but by no means least, two tablespoons of olive oil. One, two. Okay, now before we put the water in, which we will need to because it will be a little bit dry to start with, we just give it a little whizzer. So in it goes. Now there's a thing in there to stop it shooting out the top, so just be careful. So I'm just going to give it a little. So 
that's the first mix. And you can, when you look at it, it's a bit grainy. So we've got some just some normal uh, cold water. Just put in about a tablespoon, and then go again. And then have a look at it. How's it looking? Looks all right. Use a little knife to taste taste it. Salt and pepper. Bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And it does need a little bit more water. It's still a little bit thick. So if you add up to two tablespoons, it's fine. It doesn't matter if that's what, what you'll need. So I'll just give it another one. Just and there is a beautiful green Hummus. So all you do, tip it out into your bowl. If, like me, you struggle to get stuff out, these little fellas are brilliant. They're sort of the spatulas with the real bendy sides, so you can get into every nook and cranny. Because you've made it, you should keep it as much as you can. So there is a wonderful pea and cannellini bean hummus. Now you can make it as thick or as thin as you like. It's up to you or it depends what you're going to use it for. Um, this is just a beautiful flavour. You can have it with pretty much anything. It'll go with all kinds of stuff, with, with chicken, with fish. It goes with kebabs, it goes with potatoes, it goes with everything. Because once you taste it, you'll go, wow. And when, you, when you've made this, you'll think, hmm. What I could add to that to change it slightly. No, no prizes for guessing that I'm going to add some a little bit of chili because that would be nice for a little bit of heat. But obviously, it depends what you've got. So if I'm having this with that cauliflower, the cauliflower is going to be hot enough with the paprika, so it doesn't need it. Um, if you wanted to add some mint, be lovely. Um, some basil, be nice. Put some herbs in, freshen it up. Um, it'd be lovely. But th this is a really lovely non chickpea hummus. I don't know whether you can call it hummus if it's not got chickpea. I think you can, even though it's, it's not, but it's, it's really, really lovely. Um, so give this one a try uh, and we'll have that with our roasted collie wobbles. All right. So what are we going to do? I did promise you a watermelon pizza. And that's exactly what we're going to do. A watermelon, lovely things. Um, they're a great way of, uh, you know, on a really hot day of getting liquids into your kids or anyone really. Um, people don't really know what else to do with them apart from slice them and eat them. So I'm going to show you something. It's a bit of fun, but it's delicious. And actually, if you're having it um, from anything from a kid's party through to grown up, just just a meal or people coming around, it's just a really lovely thing to, show, to bring out. And it's a bit of a wow factor. And it's really easy to do. I'm actually going to be using a version of this um, recipe for a children's charity picnic that I'm going to be doing some recipes for. So really excited about that. So let's go. What do we need for this one? Well, obviously a good old watermelon. Um, I've got here some tropical fruit, just frozen tropical fruit. So it just comes in a bag of tropical fruit. Um, so there's everything in there. There's mango, there's pineapple, there's everything. It's lovely. Papaya. I've got a lime, and in here, this little bag, um, is um, toasted coconut flakes. Now, I was looking everywhere for toasted coconut flakes, and I got, all I could find was coconut flakes, so I thought I'm going to have to toast them myself. And I'm a bit petrified of toasting things like that, because I either burn them or, or they don't toast properly. But these things, they're cut by urban fruit, and they come in little bags of um, coconut chips, so they're gently baked. 
And actually, I've just nibbled a few, they're really, they're really nice. They're really tasty little snacks, gluten-free, good in fibre, why not? And then last but by no means least, we've got a bit of honey. If that was last, it would be last, but it isn't, because I've got some here, I've got some herbs, I've got some coriander and some basil. And that's it. I have my trusty pizza plate. You don't, you don't need to have one of these, but you know, it's all good fun, isn't it? So I'm going to cut out a slice of the pizza, just if you like, call it whatever we want. So I'll just put one half over there. And then we'll do a good sort of wadge so you get enough. Okay. In fact, I'll do another one. Why not? Let's do another. So do some more. Let's have some fun. Why not? That's this. Actually, is where this knife uh, really comes into its own because it's almost like a like a saw as well. It's brilliant. So you've got these. Looks a bit more like a pizza now, isn't it? Eh? So what I'm going to do. Stop wondering what well, that was sticking up. I'm going to just make some little pizza chunks. Pizza slices, you see, I know what I'm doing. I'll do some more with this one. Uh, you can do big ones, little ones, do whatever you like. And then all we do is arrange these. I'll just move this out of the way a bit so you can see what's going on. A bit better. So we arrange them onto a plate in the shape of said pizza. All right. Now you can either stick them all together or have them bit wide apart, it's up to you how you want to do it. Let's go for that one like that, so that's a bit more pizza we like. And we'll keep those bits for later. So I have now a base for my pizza. So I'm just going to move this board out of the way, which is not easy. So here we have our pizza. Okay, I'm stretching it a little bit, but it, it does look a bit like a pizza. Next, the tropical fruit. Now, just literally scatter it on top. This is your, your cheese or your pineapple, pineapple and pizza, yeah. And, you know, if you like different types of fruit, then by all means. But it's quite nice to have it so that it looks a little bit like a pizza, you know, with the different colours. Just scatter it on. So if you have used frozen ones, which I have, obviously just make sure that they are well defrosted by the time you get to eating it. And then these beautiful coconut flakes, we just sort of scatter them on top. Now this is like a, a second layer of cheese. Scatter it on. And have it sort of scattered around the plate just for a bit of effect. Why not? It makes it me not look as messy as I really am. Scatter it on. And then a bit of coriander and a bit of basil. Now all I'm going to do is just rush them up into a little bowl. And on my board I'm just going to roughly chop them into small ish bits just to flake just to sprinkle over the top all right and this uh, just the smell just delicious and then you just literally dingle dangle dangle you know what i've made this a few times and it never ceases to amaze me how beautiful it is i i, I don't I, I i do find food really Fascinating and beautiful because you can create so many things. It's brilliant. So lime 
Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll zest it first. Into this bowl, I'm going to zest half a lime. So I'm just doing one side of it. Limes are so lovely, aren't they? It smells amazing. Just make sure you've got a good half of zested. Nearly. Okay, there we go. Just give that a good biff baff. And then we're going to cut it in half. And the juice of half of it goes in. Again, if you're struggling, just stick a a spoon or a fork into it, whatever, just to help you get the juice out. And if you're a bit daft like me, you'll have a little cut on your finger. Lemon juice in a cut. It does hurt, but I'm trying to be brave. Not really. Now, honey. Go whatever you like. So, a tablespoon of honey just gives you that little bit of sweetness. And she pops. Just give it a nice mix up until you, the, the honey sort of dissolved into the, the lime juice. Oh, he's come to say hello. Are you come to star again? No? Okay. And then, all you do with a spoon is just drizzle it over. This is like your olive oil on a pizza. And you just drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. I know I say this a lot, but this. <laughs> the smell of the herbs with the, the limes and the tropical fruits. Whoa. I'll show you a proper picture of this when we get there, but this is just a thing of absolute beauty. And really not that hard to do. The hardest bit is chopping the, the watermelon. Thankfully I've got a good knife, uh, but if, you, if you're really struggling and I did halfway through have a bit of a, oh, I can't do this, then just get someone to help you chopping up the, the watermelon. Or, um, I noticed in the shops now, um, well, they've probably been there for years, but you can buy the, almost, like this, they're in triangles of watermelon, so you can get like the picnic packs, but they've got six slices in, and that's perfect for you making your pizza, so you can actually get them made for you, um, which is great. So you can do it yourself, or you can buy the bits, it doesn't matter. Again, it's adaptable, you do whatever you feel is right. And again, when you taste it, you might think, oh, a bit sweet, maybe a bit less honey, or a bit sour, whatever, more honey, it's up to you. You do whatever you like. So, I will, now go and get my cauliflower because it's nearly ready. I'm waiting for the bibber because the, the timer was set and I because I have absolutely no idea what time I put it in. So thankfully I set my timer. Um, I've got one going on the oven, I've got one over by the sink, and I've got another one on my phone, just in case I forget <laughs> I forget what it was for. Um, so there you go. Now just before I finish this little bit, uh, obviously I've shown you this thing for opening uh, opening jars. But I've got this little gadget as well. Now, I know I'm plugging Active Hands a lot here, but it's genuinely very good stuff. Um, now, this little fella, this little space buggy, is for grinding your own garlic or ginger. So you literally just pop it in, in the slot, close the lid, and you can do a walkie, 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 like that. And the blades inside Mash it all up, open the lid, and shaky shaky, out it comes. And you know what, it's actually really nice <laughs> massaging on the hands, it's very nice. I'm not sure that would be a bit weird while you're doing garlic anyway. But no, it's really, really good. It, it's, a, it's a great little thing in it. So if you, you know, if you want it, you've got some garlic cloves, you need using them up, then Put them in this, mince them up. If you don't need to use them right now, just put them in a little one of the um, the bags and freeze it. And then you've got some frozen minced chopped garlic for yourself. If, if you want to be, uh, you know, keep it in the fridge for a little bit, which you can, uh, just put a little bit of olive oil to in with the, the minced garlic and have the container that it's in with a sealed lid. Because if you don't, 
even if you think you've sealed it with cling film or whatever, when you open your fridge, you're gonna get one hell of a waft. Right, well, everything is now cooked. Um, you can see this beautiful whole roasted cauliflower, lovely and charred, smell of smoky paprika and garlic. It's fantastic. And this is the, the pea hummus. Again, you, I've put a, put a bit of mint on the top there, you put whatever you like, and once you've got it, you flavour it how you want. And then the pizza. I think this is fantastic. So there you go, three lovely dishes. You could do the cauliflower on the barbie if you wanted to, uh, if you've got the weather for it. Um, these are all indoor, outdoor dishes, do whatever you like with them. So I really hope you enjoy them uh, and I hope you have some fun making them and, and making them your own. You know, put what, what you like on them. That's the whole point of, of cooking is to take a, a base from someone and then tweak it to, to how you like it. I really hope you've enjoyed these six sessions. I've just loved it. I think if you, you look back at the first two, you can see how nervous I was. It's, I've not done anything like this before, um, but it's, it's made me realize just how much I, I love it, how much I'm grateful for the chance to be able to do it and how much reward there is just hearing one person say, I've started cooking again, I've made something. Uh, I just felt a little bit better for that little bit of time and that is just the best thing. So I thank you all for watching, um, for sticking with me, for your support. Uh, I, I can't tell you how much it means, it's just incredible. I'd love to do some more of these, we'll see, we'll see. If, the, if, if you want more then maybe I'll do some more, we shall see. But I've thoroughly enjoyed it meeting so many amazing people on all the calls and some great questions, some really fascinating insights into how people are living with pain, what works for them, what doesn't work for them. It's just amazing because I don't know all the answers. If I did, I'd be worth millions and I'm, I'm not. Um, I, and I wouldn't be like I am. Um, I just know what, what has worked for me. And if a little bit of that does a little bit of good for you, then Amazing. I, I, I'd be so happy. So please stay safe, stay cooking, stay enjoying it, stay working with what you've got, however you're feeling. Remember all the, the ways you can do things differently. Uh, you don't have to have to do everything the same way every time, even to the point of I'm sat here at the dining table and made the last two sessions of, of it here. So you can do it. Just give it a try, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Find another way, and it will eventually get there. It took me so long to find the ways to work for me. I'm hoping I can pass that on to you and it will help. But you'll find other things, and I'd love to hear back through the festival if you could email in anything that's worked great for you, uh, anything that hasn't, anything that you thought, oh, I wonder if anyone's heard of this one, some tips, and was, you know, just share it because it's such a community of people we are. We're a community of incredible people living extraordinary lives. Um, and also our, our families, our loved ones, etc., are all in that. Um, it's important that they're you know, included. And I think to be able to come out and say, look what I made. I made this for you. I made this for me. It doesn't matter if it's just for yourself. You should look at it and go, whoa. Take some pictures. If there's no one near it, take some pictures, send it to someone and say, look what I just made. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what it tastes like, what it looks like. The fact is you did it and you should be so, so proud of yourself for giving it a go. And keep trying, keep learning, keep failing, keep going. It doesn't matter. It's all just fun. Enjoy it. Really, please do enjoy it. So thank you so, so much for, for watching. Who knows when I'll be back. If the festival won't be back, I'll, I'll come back and we'll do some more things. So thank you so much. Please all stay safe, play, stay well, and carry on doing your cookfulness cooking.